Hello again gamers, welcome back to the Board Game Captain. I'm the Captain and today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you how to play Niche. So first things first, I want to thank uh, the designer Andy Hopwood for sending me this copy of Niche to play and check out and review. Uh, so this game was published by Hopwood Games in conjunction with a charity organization called the Foundation for Conductive Education. Uh, before we get too into this game, I do want to say I've got a bunch of links in the description down below that you can check out at your leisure. There's a link to BoardGameCaptain.com. Head over there. It's a great hub for all things Board Game Captain. There's also a link to my Patreon. So if you're in a position to and would like to support the channel, you can head over to my Patreon and do that there. And there's also a link to my Teespring store. We can get some Board Game Captain merch, some cool gamer gear, t-shirts, and mugs, etc. So... All in the description down below. Check it out at your leisure. All right, so Niche is a game for two to seven players, ages six and up. And I don't see a time estimate on here, but this one plays really quick. I would say like 15 minutes at the most, even in a large player game. Uh, now, in regard to the two to seven players, it does in fact play at two to seven players. There are enough cards in here to play at all those player counts. I prefer it with more players. The largest number of players I played it with was four, and I really liked it uh, most at four. So I think larger player counts seem to be uh, better at this. Two is is okay, but there's an, it's not as dynamic, and, and the formation on the table doesn't get as big, which I think is, is part of the fun factor for this game. Uh, so I do prefer it at four players now uh the in regard to the six and up that is actually pretty accurate this game is really easy to learn uh so six and up is fine so the majority of the components are cards and then you've of course got the rules and that's really it so the back of the card deck looks like that and then the front is tons of different shapes and colors you have uh squares circles and triangles in blue yellow and red and that's very important for how this game plays because the shapes and colors are going to be quite important so this might not be i'm not really sure uh i haven't consulted anyone who's colorblind but this might not be a very colorblind friendly game uh i don't know if people with colorblindness are able to tell the difference between yellow blue and red feel free to comment down below if you can tell me if i'm going to pull out three different color cards here if you can easily tell the difference between these three, three color cards and you are colorblind, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so <clears throat> I do want to, before I get into this, I want to talk about the, the rules and also there's this extra card here uh, specifically about uh, the uh, Foundation for Cognitive Education. I'm not too familiar with them, uh, but again, this game was done in conjunction with them. Now, the rules are very short. It's a tiny little fold-open pamphlet, but it has, in this tiny pamphlet, multiple diagrams, and it explains the rules very easily. This is the kind of game you're going to be up and running in no time. Now, I just want to read this bit here from the uh, Life Learning Skills Conductive Education works with children and adults who have conditions such as cerebral palsy, strokes, MS, or Parkinson's, helping them to lead more independent lives. Conductive education succeeds through its uh, active approach. It enables learners to develop their all-round skills by enhancing their self-esteem, motivation, and awareness of their capabilities. So this is obviously not just a game, but also meant to be an educational and therapeutic tool. So I, I, I you know, want you to keep that in mind while I am showing you how to play this game, that the purpose is not just entertainment. It's also education and therapy. All right, so we're going to head over to the table. I'm going to show you how this game plays, and then we're going to come back. Uh, I'm going to talk about how this game feels, uh, and I'm going to rate it, review it, and we're going to get a second opinion from Len. Here we are set up to play a two-player game of niche. So the first thing you got to do is you shuffle up the deck, and then you deal out seven cards to each player to be their hand. Followed by the dealer will place one card face up from the top of the deck in the center of the table, and they will declare... No red, no triangle. And that is because the card that was played is a red triangle, which means that on my play, I have to play something other than a red card and other than a triangle. I cannot play either a triangle of any color or a shape of red. So I am going to place a blue 
square and I'm going to say no blue, no square. And now that I have increased the size of this row by uh, to a two, two cards wide of that row, I will get two points. No yellow, no circle. So now Lynn has placed a yellow circle here, increasing the size of this row to three, getting three points. And in addition, increasing the number of cards that can no longer also be played in this row. Because while on my play, I cannot play a yellow or a circle anywhere in the formation, whether it's in a column or in this row, I also, in this row, cannot play a yellow circle, a red triangle, or a blue square. Because in each row and each column, you can only have one copy of any specific card. And that way, it's kind of similar to Sudoku. So for instance, I'm gonna play another blue square here. Now I cannot add it to this row because there is already a blue square in that row. So I'm going to add it to this column and I'm gonna say no blue, no square, and that is a two point play because I have made that column too tall. I'm going to play here and say no circle, no yellow. All right, so that gives you three points. Now I am going to play here and say no blue, no triangle. Now this makes a row and a column of two each, which is a total of four points. So that is a four point play for my turn. I'm going to play over here and say no red, no square. And Wait. that gets me four points. I'm gonna play here and say no yellow, no circle. And it makes a row of three and a, a column of two. That is a five point play for me. I'm gonna play here and say no blue, no triangle. I believe that is six points. No. No? Five. Five points. Three for the column, two for the row. Oh, okay, I was looking the wrong way. I'm gonna play here with a red circle, say no red, no circle, and this is a six point play because I have a four long row and a two column. I'm gonna say no yellow, no square, and... That is a six point play. Six. Yeah, that's very nice, very well done. Now. I'm going to show my cards to the camera. Lynn, cover your eyes. Uh, because as you can see, I cannot play either of these cards based on what Lynn just said no to. So I have to pass. I have to pass too. So now as we both have to pass and we can't play any further, we would do our final scoring. So this is how the game is played. Usually though, you play until someone plays all of the cards in their hand, which is more likely to happen in larger player games. Uh, this is a, a fairly unlikely situation where we've both had to pass uh, and usually doesn't happen in, in three and four player games. And then uh, when one player plays their last card, everyone else gets one more chance to play a card and then you do the final scoring. So out of curiosity, who had the higher score, Lynn? Me, I had 21, you had 19. Oh, so congratulations. Lynn won this small mock game we were doing of niche. So now we're going to head back over to the table. Uh, going to talk about how this game plays and feels, and we're going to rate it and review it. All right, so there you go. That is how you play a game of niche. Now, I do want to say that, generally speaking, that was a very quick version because we just showed a two-player version. But when playing it, say, four players, the form gets much larger and, and, and spreads out over the table. I do like it better with larger player counts so you can have a larger form of uh, cards placed out on the table. Now, the game feels like it does take some inspiration from games like Domino's, but also, interestingly, it very much feels like it takes some inspiration from Sudoku. Because uh, with Sudoku, of course, you can't have the same numbers in the same rows or columns, and this has the similar thing where you cannot have the same card in the same row or column, which is very interesting. Um, the game is fun, but also, obviously, in addition to the game being intended for, you know, a quick, lighthearted, icebreaker, fun game, it's also really, really intended for education and therapy, as it, as it tells you in here. And for that purpose, I think this is really good. So now for just adults, because I'm an adult who mostly plays with other adults, for just adults, this might not be the game for you. I think the game is fun. I played it a couple times, but I don't know how much more I will play it with other adults. But if you have kids, or you have someone in your life who has a brain-related condition or injury where they need things like this to help them therapeutically, 
in those cases, this is a really great tool. This is a really great tool, again, to use for education or therapy. Uh, and in those cases, I would highly recommend this game to you if, if any of that, you know, falls into your situation. You have a loved one who had a stroke. You have a loved one who has cerebral palsy. Uh, in those cases, this could be a fantastic tool to help uh, in their cognitive development, in their ability to improve their critical thinking skills, and also to help in self-confidence. And that is really, really cool. I really like it for that purpose. So for me, I'm going to give this game 6 out of 10 stars, which means I like the game, but I kind of got to be in the in the in the mood to play it but i would more highly recommend it to you for its intended purpose if you have young children or family members with uh such ailments where this would be a valuable tool for you but let's get a second opinion from lynn lynn how many stars out of 10 would you give to niche five so lynn gave it a five which is kind of middle of the road it's like you know it's okay not not great not not bad just all right, so, and she said to me she uh, thought as a game it wears out a little quickly for her, but she also said that she feels like it's much more of a of a tool, again, on the therapy and education side. So there you have it. Um, let me know if you've tried out Niche, what you think of it uh, in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this review of a game and you'd like to see me do more like it, be sure to give it a like, share it on all forms of social media. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Board Game Captain. That's Captain spelled with a K on YouTube. And until next time, game on.